Point guard, yeah. Right. I guess I can start with the point guard this time. You can start it off. Yeah, number 10, I get, uh, I know it might sound crazy, but I got Chris Paul. Um, uh, I just don't know. Like, I just think sometimes he don't know when to take over games. But he, this year basically changed, could have changed my mind a little bit. But I'm going to still wait for a minute. I don't want to just go by, oh, he got OKC in the sixth place and oh, he's better than – I just don't want to do that. But uh, before a long time, I had him in my top five point guards. But then I was looking at, like, the, uh, not the playoff stats, but just the way, like, the big games. Like, I see some big games where he's, like, two for seven or something. It's like some people criticize Westbrook for shooting. It's like Westbrook went out blazing, you know. Like, Westbrook went out like that. But I think Chris Paul just needs to know I'm going to take over game because he's a good shooter, a good defender, um, like one ball and passing range. And he's like the point, he's a point guy. Like he really is, like, so was, like getting assists and stuff. But I just think taking over games is the reason why. But I still got top 10. He accomplished, I think he made eight defensive teams, something like that. He made a lot of NBA teams, a lot of defensive teams. Literally, an assist like four times or five uh, in steals. So I got Chris Paul number 10. He's one of my favorite players of all time. Like, I remember arguing with people about Darren Williams and stuff. I used to always be on Chris Paul's side every single time, bro. Like, 10 time All Star. He won an All-Star MVP, but no league MVPs, but that don't tell the whole story for me. Six-time steals champ and a uh, four-time assist champ. That's Chris Paul for me. Hmm. Well, I know I might I might, I might, sound crazy, but I got Russell Westbrook. Um, okay. Me, okay. Uh, I mean, three straight years averaging a triple-double. And then you got that team that he had, even though they didn't get far in the playoffs, but he got them in the playoffs. Uh-huh. Um, I love I love his tenacity. I just like his whole attitude, like how he is. Like he one of them old school players. Like like on the court, I don't like you, but we'd be friends after the game. You know, and I really respect that. Exactly. When I used to play ball, I used to get down like that. You know, I used to play like that. Like I didn't like you on the court, but after the game, we could be cool. You know, and I and I just don't understand how anybody can hate him. Like how, what this what he brings to the table. Just the it's whole killer instinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. You know, he got some mama mentality in him, to me. For sure, bro. That's a good number 10. Number nine, I got a uh, – same thing what I had with the center for George Mikan. Uh, Bob Cousy, I have 10 without Bob Cousy for me. I don't want to leave Bob Cousy out. Um, I did have uh, Frazier – I had Gary Payton and Frazier 11 and 12, but they didn't make my top 10. But, cause I, 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 got, I think I got a solid 10, though, but – um, Bob Cousy made 13 All-Star games, 12 NBA teams, eight-time assist champ, six-time – he got six rings, two-time All-Star MVP and a league MVP. Average 18 – basically 18, five and, five and eight. 18.5 rebounds, eight assists, literally an assist eight times. In an era where it was the 50s where, like, there was no innovation. Like, they didn't have no players to watch before them. So, I like Bob Cousy at nine. Um, for nine, for me, I got Chris Paul. Um, okay. Everything you said, but I'm gonna add this. If you notice, every team that he's been to, he made better. Good point. I mean, he made he made a lot of every team he got to, he made better. Cause you know, as an OKC fan, I thought we were done. I didn't think they. I thought we was going to the lottery. I did not know that we were gonna be a playoff team, and he kind of like proved me wrong. So that's why I had to him nine. Cause I mean, like you say, he. He another one. I mean, a lot of players in the league don't really like him. You know, he ain't everybody's favorite guy. But he do what he do on that court. So that's why I got Chris Paul at number nine. Okay. Chris Paul at nine. Number, number eight, I got uh, Russell Westbrook. Um, uh, let's see. I just think his ability to – and, of course, he's not – decision-making, he's probably not better than Chris Paul to me. But I just think the – the fact that Westbrook, can, you know, he still can, like this year, he's shooting 47% average 27, 8, and 7. So he can rebound, uh, play defense, pass, and put up Andy 27 points, three years in a row with a triple double, league MVP, uh, two all star MVPs, and then he won. He literally assists, he literally lead an assist twice and scoring twice. So that's like some Nate, Nate Archibald type of stuff, bro. Like he's like the next, that's what he reminded me of a little bit as far as like scoring and uh, passing. So I got Westbrook number eight. Um, number seven, I got Gary Payton. Oh. Who is number eight? I mean, number eight. Number eight, sorry. Oh, okay. Number eight, I got Gary Payton. Yeah, number eight, I got Gary Payton. 
Um, um, I love the you know you know great defender, point guard, one defensive player of the year. Um, like well, he kind of remind me of Westbrook a little bit. Got that dog in him. Um, he one of my he he, he one of my favorite point guards ever. So. Yep. I, I, got, okay. I got the glove number eight. Yep. 1996 defensive player of the year. Nine NBA teams, nine defensive teams, and nine uh, all-star games. I don't know. He got three, nine, three. <laughs> I'll be looking at the stats. But yeah. Uh, number seven, it might shock you, bro. Uh, I got John Stockton, number seven. I don't know if that's too far fetched of your list. Is that far away from what you got? I mean, you don't have to say it, but. Not, not not too far away. Okay. He averaged 13 points, basically 11 assists, 52% shooting, 38 from 3, 83 from the free throw line. Uh, nine. He led the lead in assists nine times, though. So, yeah. But um, I put him over Westbrook, but yeah, he's just a better decision maker than Westbrook. But, yeah, uh, Stockton had nine years in a row leading the lead in assists, averaging 13 and 11. I just think the – I just think the guys ahead of him prime was a little better. Like, if you look at their prime numbers. Um, but, yeah, he, he did. I respect him for the longevity. Most steals ever, most assists ever. Um, been to the finals twice. So, yeah, I like uh, John Stockton, number seven. Two-point guard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, number seven, I got Steve Nash. Okay. Nash, my guy, Nash. Uh, I got Steve Nash, number seven, you know. A lot of people, a lot of people try to try to take away his MVP and say, "Oh, well, such and such should have got it." But I look at it a little differently. I think when he got over there, he made that team a lot better, and he was getting them players the ball, to give me the ball in their spots, and a lot of them players he he made them a lot better than what they were. Off, I forget what really happened. I think somebody, Amari Stoudemire, got suspended or something like that. I think somebody got suspended. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, so I got Steve Nash number seven. Okay, nice pick. Uh, I got Steve Nash number six. Um, basically, I was fourteen and nine, but we can't really look at his overall stats because, like, he started off in Phoenix. He came off the bench the one two his first two years, kind of like Kobe. He played forty games. Then we got to Dallas, that's where he started. But uh, he only shot 36% his third year. But then we look at his one, two, three, four, five, six. He had six seasons in a row in Phoenix from 28, 29, to 35, where he shot 50% shooting. And he, he always over, he had big to over 40% on the three point line, 42.8, and 90 from the free throw line. So he only, he only 1% away from the 50, 40, 90 for us the whole career. So that's why I put Nash. Uh, I think he's better shooting than Stockton. I think his prime was better than Stockton's two time MVP. Uh, and I think, like, I'm a Kobe fan. I don't think, like, people say MVP is, like, but that's the case when Jordan should have MVP every year, you know. But yeah. uh, most valuable player, Steve Nash, was more valuable to his team than Kobe was because, like, I think that year they didn't even have Amari the whole year, and they still won 60 games. Like, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I got Nash, number six. Um, Number six for me, I got John Stockton, number six. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I mean, I know, like you said, he averaged 13 points and all that type of stuff. But I, I think I think in that era, I don't think the point guards was really focusing on scoring like that. They was really, like, being a quarterback, sure. kind of, you know, you know, get everybody where they need to get them. And then, you know, he got Carl Malone a lot of easier shots. Um, he did. Yeah, he got Carl Malone a lot of easier shots and everybody else a lot of easier shots. I mean, I know a lot of people might think I'm crazy for putting him over Nash. But, you know... I, I think uh, I think Stockton was was you know he, I think he, 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 with the skills he was a better defender. He's not, he ain't, he's not even close. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, he a better not defender sure. close, defensively, and I think uh-huh. uh, he the assist leader and the steal leader. Yep, most points and assists. Yeah, he totally. ran away when he, you know he went up against uh, Michael Jordan twice, so. You know he did, he never got a ring, but I I I love his, I like his career. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, my top five, they all get, yeah, they all got championships, but yeah. 